Got another exam question here on the transition elements topic. So we're up to number eight now. As usual, the link to the questions in the description of the video. So just click on that, try the question, and then play when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so part A, we've got to explain why two of the period for D block elements are not transition elements. So a transition element first, that's an element that forms at least one ion with an incomplete D subshell. Scandium and zinc are the two elements in the period that aren't transition elements, so don't fit this definition. And that's because scandium will only form the 3 plus ion. There's its electron configuration. You'll see it hasn't even got any D electrons, so the D subshell is empty. Zinc only forms the 2 plus ion. There's its electron configuration, and you'll see that its D subshell is full. So neither of these fulfill this um, criteria that it needs to form an ion with an incomplete D subshell. Part B now, so explain how this is able to act as a bidentate ligand. So it's able to donate two electron pairs via the nitrogens um, to form two coordinate bonds with a central metal ion. Formula of complex ion A, well what is A? It's made from CO3 plus um, two chloride ligands and two of these ligands as well. So it's got that formula there. It's got a one plus charge because this is three plus the cobalt. These are neutral. These are one minus each. The coordination number is six and that's because coordination number is all about the number of coordinate bonds that are going to the central metal ion. So each of these ligands is putting two coordinate bonds to the cobalt. So there'll be four coordinate bonds from those two ligands and one each from those two. So six altogether. So we're moving on to the 3D diagrams now to show the three stereoisomers. I've already drawn up the um, empty octahedra. Um, so the first isomer I'm going to draw is the trans one. So that's where the chloride ligands are 180 degrees apart. So I'm going to put them there. I could have put them there or I could have put them there. But the easiest way I think to draw it is this way. So that means the two bidentate ligands are there and there. So moving on to the cis isomer, that's where I need the two chloride ions to be 90 degrees apart. I'm going to put them there and there. I could put them there and there, I could put them there and there. As long as they're 90 degrees apart, it's fine. So that means my bidentate ligands are here and here, and there and there. And the reason I've drawn them in this order, so trans first, then cis, is because the mirror image of the cis isomer is not superimposable on the first one, and these are the optical isomers. So all I need to do is draw the, the mirror image of this, so I need a CL there and there, bidentate here, and bidentate there. Moving on to part C now, so we've got to explain how ligand substitution reactions allow haemoglobin to transport oxygen in the blood. Got a little diagram to try and explain what I'm talking about here. So this is representing oxygenated haemoglobin. So it's your haemoglobin um, part there. So the oxygen ligand is um, forms a coordinate bond with the Fe2 plus ion in the haemoglobin. That gets carried to the cells where the oxygen ligand substitutes for a water ligand. So part we've got to write the equilibrium constant expression for this equilibrium here. So it's the concentrations of the equilibrium of the product over the reactants. Equilibrium concentration obviously represented by the square brackets. So it's this over these. And finally, explain why carbon monoxide is toxic. I've got my little diagram back again, but I've swapped the O2 ligand for CO now. So this coordinate bond is much, much stronger with the CO ligand than the O2. So there's my way of writing that there. So because of that, the carbon monoxide stays on. That means the haemoglobin has less ability or less capacity to carry oxygen.